right, so on this build, we're going to be building the V-slot belt-driven linear actuator. And you can see that it has a motor mount plate on this end and an idler pulley plate on this end, as well as just a belt looped through the center of the V-slot here. And you could use different size V-slots. You can also use different size plates. On this one, I have a 20 to 80 millimeter mounting plate, but you can also use the 20 millimeter mounting plate, which is what we'll be using for this build. This is a really nice build because it's completely modular. You can move these things around anywhere you want along the system. You can make it as long as you want. Even on this one, is used on a, a prototype machine I was working on. I have L brackets on here so it can be bolted. There's just so many ways along the v-slot you can mount things as well as the plate itself so it's a very simple build it's very basic but allows for a lot of modifications along the way so let's go ahead and get started with this example and we'll see what it inspires so the first thing we're going to do is put together a wheel kit i have all four of them laid out here and they come with the wheel shell two of the bearings two of the precision shims and one of the m5 nuts and just to show you how one goes together the bearing just slides in a precision shim goes between the bearings like this the other bearing sandwiches it in place and that is how you put that together so as far as the extra precision shim and the m5 nut we'll save that for later but let's go ahead and build all four of these all right that looks great let's move on to the next step all right, so for this step, we're going to be adding the wheels to the 20 millimeter V-slot plate. And so I have two of the wheels. We'll do two at a time. I have two of the wheel kits as well as two of the 25 millimeter M5 screws and the six millimeter aluminum spacers. So if you look at the plate, you'll notice on one side, we have a set of holes that is larger. These are for the eccentric cams, which will go in later. On this side, we have the, the standard M5 holes. And so we're just gonna slide the screw through here and through here, and we'll build up these two wheels on this side of the plate. So I'm just gonna take a spacer, aluminum spacer, precision shim, the wheel, now, if the wheel doesn't go on because the shim doesn't line up, sometimes you could spin it and it'll go on. If not, you could take it off and just align it. There we go. And I'm just gonna put these on hand tight for now. So again, six millimeter spacer, precision shim, and the wheel. Last but not least, we'll put the M5 nut on. All right, that looks great. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll tighten that down. Okay, they're tightened down. They still roll smooth. Everything looks good there. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so on this step, we're going to do exactly what we did over here. The only difference being that instead of this six millimeter aluminum spacer, we'll be using these eccentrics, which are essentially a cam system that allow you to adjust the wheel onto the V-slot. So let's go ahead. We'll put our screws through here and of course they're going to look loose first. We'll do one at a time. Take your eccentric with the lip facing in it's going to go in the hole just like you see here and then we'll do our precision shim the wheel and the m5 nut looks good let's move on to the next one going in this hole so that's the hole pattern there eccentric precision shim wheel the m5 nut all right that looks good let's go ahead and tighten these down however we don't want to over tighten them because we still need to be able to adjust the cams so we'll just snug them onto the plate okay that looks good i have them on there they're they're not overly tightened they're just snug and uh, the wheels were all smooth everything looks good there one of the things I'm gonna say to do now is to take, if you look at the eccentrics, there'll be a mark or a divot on there. Just go ahead and rotate that divot out away from the other set of wheels. And that will give you the widest spacing that you have there. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so you can see I have both of the divots facing out this way. That'll give us the widest gap that we have here. And let's move on to the next step. On this step, we're gonna introduce a piece of 20 by 40 millimeter V-slot. And so what we're gonna do is set the preload of our plate onto the V-slot. So we'll be adjusting those cams, those eccentrics onto the V-slot itself. So you can see I'm just 
lining that up like that. And of course it's loose right now. So we're just gonna take our wrench and we're gonna rotate the eccentric. And you'll notice I'm alternating between the eccentrics. Just kind of working them back and forth, trying to find that when they first lock on. And I'm also using the wheel, the amount of friction on the wheel to kind of see how tight it is. And we don't want it too tight because you still want it to be able to roll smoothly. Once you're locked in that V, the idea is that it can't wobble this way at all. You just need it to lock on, which you can see here we're locked on. We can't wobble that way. My eccentric is a little less than halfway on both of these, on the divots. So that's perfect. It's nice, it's smooth. And uh, again, you can't wiggle it. It's just really smooth operation. That is really nice. Okay, let's move on to the next step. For this step, we're gonna go ahead and build the smooth idler pulley and attach it to the smooth idler pulley plate. So we'll go ahead and take one of our bearings and the smooth idler pulley shell, press fit that in there. You'll take your eighth inch nylon spacer, put that in, the other bearing, we'll sandwich that together. And you'll notice it may not be aligned. You could just take a wrench or a screwdriver and just line that barrel up a little bit better. And that looks good. Okay, so we have our, we have our wheel assembly. Uh, we also have our shim and our M5 nut and our M5 screw. At this point, we need to bring in our three millimeter spacer. You see that here? So we're just going to take our screw, put it through the smooth idler pulley, and then the three millimeter spacer. We'll put this through the plate, and then we'll put this precision shim on the back and the M5 nut, just like you see there, and we'll go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, that looks great. Just make sure that you don't over tighten it. You want this to be able to roll smooth when the belt wraps around it. That looks really good. Let's move on to the next step. Taking our stepper motor, this is a NEMA 17, and we'll be mounting it to our stepper motor plate using M3 screws. So we'll go ahead and just set the motor through here. You're gonna to wanna to pay attention to where the wire port is for your motor. You have to decide at this point which way you want it facing. Uh, I'm gonna face mine in back towards the plate here and just go ahead and put the screws in and tighten her down. Okay, that looks great. Let's move on to the next step. On this step, we have our pulley, timing belt pulley, as well as the two set screws. We're gonna go ahead and put the set screws in there and get them started. Okay, that looks good. You want to make sure that you do not put the set screws too far through because you want to make sure that your, your uh, pulley will slide over the stepper motor shaft. If the set screws are in the way, uh, it'll stop it. And we'll go ahead, I'm just gonna keep that on there the way it is. Now we'll be able to adjust it to center it later. But for now, I'll just tighten it in place. And you'll notice that if your stepper motor has a flat side on the shaft, you want your set screw to line up with that. That way it just grabs it a little bit better. That looks good, and again, we can adjust that later. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so for this section, I brought the idler plate in, the motor mount plate assembly in, the V-slot with our, with our plate on there. Basically, we're just trying to lay out how we want these to attach. Mine's gonna be set up the way that you see here, so I'm gonna go ahead, and at this point, I'm just gonna take this plate off and lay this down on its face like you see here, and then that way I can kind of work with it. Now, what we're gonna to wanna to do is use the middle set of holes here on the plate, just like you see there. And what this allows us to do is, if I move this, I'm lined up with the middle set of holes with the center of the track here, the belt will be able to go down in the hole through the center shaft here, as well as right on top. So that's what we're after. So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna slide my double T-nut on here and on here and the flange is facing down into the track just like you see there lay this on here try to line it up a little bit there and using the m5 eight millimeter screws we're just going to go ahead and tighten that in place now one of the things i like to do is just to get it even kind of just loosen them up you can see that they'll move around like that I'm just going to bring it in a little bit where the wheel's not touching or anything but close. And then just 
push it towards me so I know I'm, I got an even spacing here and then do that last tweak and just tighten that right in place. We'll go back later when we want to adjust the belt. We'll go back and we'll be able to loosen this up and just adjust it to where we want and get more tension on it. Let's go ahead and work the motor side here. Same thing, lining up with the center. And again, I, I crack it loose a little bit. And then the main thing is pushing your finger this way to make sure you get an even uh, mount here. All right, that looks really good. In fact, let's go ahead. We know we have to adjust this one later, but we also need to get the gantry plate on there. So let's go ahead and just loosen this up. And you can see how easily it just slides off and our mount is still on there so we can slide it right back on. So we'll go ahead, we'll set that to the side for now. Let's go ahead and take our gantry plate and put slide that back on and that looks good. And then we'll slide it back on here. Using that same technique of just pushing that forward. And again, don't, don't over tighten this because we need to adjust it later. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this step, we're gonna take our timing belt and we're just going to feed it through the center track. And I have the teeth facing up and I'm just gonna slide it through here. The main thing to think about when you do this is you're trying to make sure it doesn't twist in the track and just push it through until you find it. Now, I'm using a 500 millimeter piece. If you're using a longer piece, say a 1500, you may need to push a, a stiffer wire through here first and then kind of snake the belt through attached to that. That looks good. It's on this end now, we'll come through. It folds right over top of our idler here. And then it fishes right down through the hole on the plate, a little notched hole there. And then give yourself about a inch and a half there to go through and then the teeth will engage into the teeth just like you see here so i'm just looping it around and i'm going to engage the teeth here to here and what we'll do is we'll put a zip tie here and a zip tie here and that will lock it in place okay so i brought in a couple zip ties and i'm just going to pull this back out again engage the teeth together go ahead and put your zip ties on now, you want your zip ties to be kind of uniform, so you want to make sure you start them the same way each time. Okay, so you can see what we have here. And then I'll put another zip tie right here in front. All right, that looks great. The teeth are engaged, it's not going anywhere. It's a great connection. Go ahead and take a pair of snips and just cut the excess off. If you have excess belt here, you can also snip that off if you have too much. All right, that looks good. Now, this is a good time to make sure that your pulley is in a little ways. Uh, I'm actually in really close here, but because you really want to have some adjustment room later to move this out and to uh, tighten your belt. Another thing to look at at this point before you go too much further is to make sure that your belt is not twisted in the track here. So you want to just look down the hole here, just make sure that it's straight. All right, I went through and I just made sure that it was straight. I've already gone through and I've snipped some of this belt off because it's really long, but I'm just going through the, the same hole on this side, pulling it tight. So I have a belt that's a continuous loop all the way through the channel. There's no twisting. And we're gonna go ahead and put our zip ties on. And I'm just gonna leave this long. And I've pulled this through, you know, not super tight, but tight enough so it's on there. there there's still tension, or there's, it's still loose over here, as you can see. But we could take up that looseness as we adjust this smooth idler out. Let's go ahead and put our zip ties on. Before I actually clamp the zip tie down, I want to make sure that my spacing is, is relatively the same, just so it looks uniform. Looks pretty good. We'll do this one now. Simple. That looks great. Let's go ahead and snip these excess zip ties off. And we'll go ahead and snip the excess belt off. 
All right, nice and smooth operation. At this point, we will move the smooth idler down a little bit here, and that will help tension this belt up. So I'm gonna crack these screws loose and just by hand push that down. Tighten her up. And if the belt stretches over time, you can always adjust it there. That's nice and tight. And that is the complete build of the belt driven actuator with a 20 millimeter gantry plate. It's super smooth, makes a nice face for connection. You can connect all along the V-slot. Really great build. Hope you enjoy it. Look forward to seeing all the cool builds you guys come up with using this system. Thank you for watching.